Hey guys, um, this is part two of my July wrap up, um, where I will finish talking about all of my um, comics that I read and the one graphic novel and then the last book book, meaning book of any substance. Um, well, actually it's a kid's book, so I don't know if, if, even if that counts. And the short stories that I read. Okay, so um, I read X-Men Legacy, or more of X-Men Legacy, um, and this particular one was a three-parter. Um, so it was 2.71 through 2.73, and, um, well, alright, like, I really loved the storyline of this one, but two things really bothered me. A, the harsh artistry, um, like, I really, I don't really like the harsh lines. It just, I don't know. To me, it, like, something that's like this harsh makes people not really look like people. Um, it just makes them look angry all the time, and yeah. Um, and secondly, Rogue's accent in, I don't, I don't know if it was just this particular writer, um, who is Gage, or if it's, if everybody does this with her accent, um, but, okay, since Rogue has a southern accent, it's, um, in her speech bubbles, when she says I, it's written A-H, so it's I, and that was incredibly annoying, and there were other, a little, a couple other little things, like, of was ah, like a, and it just, I don't know. Somehow, watching the films, it's a lot less annoying hearing Anna Paquin say it than it is reading it, because then I had to, like, rework my brain to talk, to read slash talk the way she was talking, and it was horrifically annoying. I really didn't like it. Um, but it was a good storyline, I will say that. Um, and next we have Doctor Who. Um, my, one of my best friends gave me these four comics. I know you can't see that there's four, but it's pretty thick. Um, for my birthday, and I'm just getting around to reading them. But, um, this is a four-part story line, or story arc, and it was amazing. First off, the art was just fantastic. There's, I don't know if you can see, but there's one of the covers. Um, and, uh, the storyline was awesome because it was, uh, Solari Solarians, I can't ever say the, the um, in Casablanca. And that was awesome, because A, it's one of my favorite films, so, um, to have that was just really cool. And they had a lot of, they had cameo appearances from the characters in the comic, which I thought was really cool. And then also, um, I'm a huge history nut, and it talks about, um, it just has the World War II feel to it, and it's just, it was awesome. Like, it was so well done. The writing was amazing. Um, the writer, uh, just did such a good job of, um, like, any time, uh, the doctor talked, uh, in the comic, I just really, Matt Smith's portrayal of the doctor just jumped right off the page. Um, so that was amazing. Yeah very, very well done. And I really like how some of them are pictures, and then some of them are illustrations. That's just really cool for the covers. Um, and then we have the four, um, Scotty Young ones that I read. Uh, first is Thor, God of Thunder. Um, this was written by Jason Aaron. Um, I really enjoyed... And it's so cute. It's got a young very So cute. Um, I really enjoyed the storyline. Uh, it was very well done. But the artistry was a little too harsh for me. Um, I did like the colors, though. I really liked the 
color scheme, but the the lines were a bit harsh. But I like like that one. I don't know. Um, but the storyline was well worth it, and I didn't hate the art so much that it was going to take away from the storyline for me. Um, next we have Wolverine. Um, this was written by Paul Cornell, and this is, uh, part one of a, I don't know how long the story arc is in this one, but this begins volume five of Wolverine, I think. Um, but the art was absolutely fantastic. I freaking loved it. And the storyline was very well done as well. And I just love, I love the, the art, like the, I mean, I love the Scotty Young. It's just so cute. Berserker, I'm telling. It was awesome. Um, next we have Avengers AI. Um, this was a really cool storyline, I thought, and, um, the art was beautiful, and I don't really know what else to say. I, this was written by Sam Humphreys, and I thought it was just very well done, um, and it's also part one of more, um, part one of a more than one issue story arc. Um, which means I have to get those as soon as possible, but, um, yeah, this was really well done. Last but not least of the Scotty Young is X-Men. Um, this was written by Brian Wood, and, um, I love the Scotty Young variant, and the reason why it's all of the girls, all of the X-Men women, um, mutants, and it says no boys, and Cyclops and Logan are just like, what the heck, why can't we come up there, is because this story arc mostly only involves the girls. Um, it has Storm and Rogue and Kitty Pride, and, um, it was just very, very well done, and the art was freaking gorgeous. And I am very excited to get the rest of it. Um, so, yeah, just incredibly well done. Loved it. Okay, and then the only graphic novel that I read was Black Widow Deadly Origins. Or Deadly Origin, excuse me. Um, I really... As far as the art goes, I was kind of, I was sort of half and half, like, um, some of it I just thought was beautiful, others I was like, eh, little, little bit harsh, um, and it, one thing that kind of bothered me a lot is, um, that the covers, like, okay, here's one of the covers where I just, I think that she looks completely different with this cover than she does back here. Like, her hair looks completely different, her face looks different, and I'm just like, did two different people draw these, or what? Because, I don't know, I guess it just bothered me because she kind of looked like a different person at some points, and I was like, um, that's, I like consistency here. I don't know. It was silly. But, um, I really liked the storyline, um, because basically it was, um, and I know that I've only been describing some of the storylines, but it's because some of them I'm honestly getting mixed up in my head because I read so many of the comics in, like, a couple of days. But, um, this one I really enjoyed because it was basically, um, it went back to Black Widow's origin obviously, because it says Deadly Origin, but also, um, it kind of brings together a lot of really, um, it brings together a lot of different Marvel characters, um, because she's had love affairs with a lot of these different characters, um, and I just thought that that was a really cool way to string different characters together in one plot line.
that didn't know much about and got to learn more about, which I thought was awesome. So, yeah, this was amazing. Um, it was very, very well done. Um, and then, again, I was a little bit torn on the uh, artistry, but that's okay, because the storyline was worth it. And the covers... Um, we're great. I'm just going to show you, this is my favorite because the way they do Wolverine is amazing. Um, really the whole cover is just gorgeous, I thought, but specifically because Wolverine's in it, I was like, yay. If y'all can't tell, I'm 100% biased in favor of Wolverine. Um, okay, so those were all the comics, and I'm sorry that I'm taking so long talking about all these, but I just, I had a really good month, and so I'm just gushing over everything I've read. Um, next I'll talk about the three short stories that I read in here. Um, one is, and actually, um, two of them I think I'll just mention, because, um, I talked about, oh, wait a second, I think I may have accidentally deleted that video. Um, okay, well, just in case, I'll talk about all three. Um, the three that I read in here were Greenshaw's Folly, um, The Thumb Mark of St. Peter, and The Blue Geranium. Um, the Thumb Mark of St. Peter and um, Greenshaw's Folly I read because um, they were coming out with another Marple film called Greenshaw's Folly, and it was based on the short stories Greenshaw's Folly and Thumb Mark of St. Peter. Um, little bit of a lie. Uh, Thumb Mark of St. Peter literally had one tiny reference in the film. Um, it was, they made the way the, the main character died in Greenshaw's Folly, um, they made her die the same way the character died in Thumb Mark of St. Peter, and that was it. Um, and then there was a lot of extra stuff added in, which was cool. Um, it was, I did think it was well done overall. It was well acted and everything. Um, but I did like the short stories a little bit better. Um, and... So, yeah, and The Mark of St. Peter is one of, it's part of the Tuesday Night Club Murders, um, which is where Miss Marple, her nephew Raymond, and all of their friends sit around and um, discuss murder. And The Mark of St. Peter is Miss Marple's story that she tells everyone. Um, and I just, it's really well done because how these stories are, um, written, Agatha Christie's a genius, obviously, but how she writes these particular ones is that, um, the teller, in this case, Miss Marple, will explain, um, the facts, and then kind of people will be, um, trying to figure it out and everything, and, um, sorry if you saw my finger go towards, but it was saying my camera was dying, um, but, yes, so, uh, because of that, I kind of have to hurry, because my phone is dying. But anyway, um, they were all very well done, um, all the short stories. Uh, I really enjoyed them. And Blue Geranium was especially cool for me, because I'd already seen the film, so I got to picture all of the characters as, um, I was reading. And I'm not really a short story... I didn't think I was a huge short story fan, but these are so well done. Um, and I just, I love Agatha Christie, and Miss Marple is my favorite, probably my favorite detective. Um, which, you know, that's, I love it. So, yes, I highly recommend this entire book, but um, specifically those are the stories that I read in here this month. Um, and they were all very good. Okay, last but not least, very quickly, we have Mary Poppins by P.L. Travers. Um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail because I don't have much time left, but this was very good. Um, there were two, since I've seen the film first, I did have a few issues with it. For example, 
in the book, Mary Poppins is a lot harsher um, in personality and in strictness than she is in the film, um, which really bothered me at some points. Um, but then there were other things in it that were so cool. Like, there are so many more little stories and little events that happen in the book than there are in the film, and, um, there are more characters. Um, one storyline I really wish they'd kept in the film is that of John and Barbara. John and Barbara are Jane and Michael's twin siblings, and they are, for most of the book, they're under one, um, and you find out about halfway through that because they're under one, they can talk to each other, and they can understand, they can converse with animals and the wind and basically everything. They, um, have their own special magical language, and they understand everything, and that's really cool, but then, unfortunately, when they turn one, they forget and so they no longer understand the birds, they no longer understand what language the wind speaks, um, and it's incredibly sad, but it was such a good storyline, um, and I really thought they should have kept that in the film. Um, but anyway, it was lovely, the illustrations were beautiful, um, and it was very, it was really cool because you get to know so much more about the Banks family, and there are so many more adventures in this, um, in the book than there are in the film. Um, but I do like the character of Mary Poppins a little bit better in the film, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it's because I'm in favor of Julie Andrews. Okay, I have to go now because it's like 17 minutes now, so it might cut off and might not even upload. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. I'm really sorry that this two-parter went on for so long. I like to chat, um, and I just, I really loved everything I read this month, um, so I had to talk in detail about it. Um, thank you guys again for watching. Uh, comment if you've read any of these comics or books or anything. And, uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.